a little bit about Pella. So Pella Corporation was founded in 1925. So it's been around for 92 years. It was founded by Pete and Zill Kuiper. They bought a company out of Des Moines and then they chose to move it to Pella. We manufacture windows and doors. We also make some screens and shades. So when you talk about windows and doors, we make wood, fiberglass, vinyl. We're actually starting to make steel as well. So pretty much any type of window we kind of see, we can kind of make. It's about 9,000 employees, so it's a fairly large company. And you can kind of see the different manufacturing sites. So there's 13 sites. Pella is the headquarters. Carroll Operations, Shenandoah, Sioux Center, Iowa. Macomb, Illinois, Portland, Oregon, Murray, Kentucky, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Dallas, Texas, San Francisco, New York, Maine, and Michigan. Those are all the manufacturing sites. Then we have a bunch of different sales branches and things like that. So when you start thinking careers, you can go just to a lot of different places, a lot of different experiences. Next slide. All right, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the public culture. And when I say, what I mean by culture is what does it feel like to work there? Or at least what do I appreciate is what I put down. I didn't put any of the bad stuff down because that doesn't make for a very good presentation. But this is what I consider the good stuff. So employee suggestions. So just at the Carroll site, um, we will get about 2,500, 3,000 suggestions a year from our employees, of which we'll get through about five to 700 of those suggestions implemented into our manufacturing operations. So we do that so that people can feel like their voice is heard, right? You want to have a way to communicate and we want to be able to hear that. Kaizen event is another way. So this is a place where we'll give a problem to a group of people. We'll pick out people from different areas of the plant, engineers, throw HR in a room and say, here's your problem to solve this week, figure it out, let us know what you come up with. And then we take that and we implement it. Sometimes they implement it that week. Then I've got this 80% on the floor. So I'm asking the managers to be on the floor 80% of their time, spending time with their employees, helping out whatever problems that they're gonna experience that day, whatever questions they've got, those managers go help take care of some of that, spend time with them. Another one I feel like we, we get taken care of. So it's really good wages at Pella, good health benefits, and as you get older, you start family, this stuff starts to matter, your benefits. Guaranteed bonus. So at the Pella Corporation, so everybody gets a guaranteed bonus while uh, they're working on the shop floor. And what that means is whatever they worked that year, they made so much money, let's say they made $40,000, they're gonna have a guaranteed bonus depending on how many years they've worked there, up to 15%. So at the end of the year, right before Christmas, which is a good time to get that money, you get that right at Christmas time. We have a 401k, does anybody know what a 401k is? One, two, three, it's a retirement program. Unless you want to work forever, you got to have a retirement program, right? you got to be thinking about that. So we have a 401k, but Pella does theirs a little bit different. Most companies say, hey, if you put 3% of your money in, we'll give you 3%. Pella Corporation does not match. They share their profits. So 25% of the profits, they give back to all the employees. So last year, 10.5% is what they gave out to every employee to put in their 401k. So once again, if you made $40,000, they gave you about $4,200 and put it in your retirement account for you. Another piece, think about challenging jobs, right? You want to get a job that's going to challenge you, that's going to grow you. Um, that's one of the things that they've got. They've got jobs that you can start on the shop floor, and we'll get into some of those jobs, but you got room for the development, you got room for advancement, and then you saw all the different manufacturing sites, even up in the corporation. You can advance into those jobs and move around. Another thing I really appreciate is what they do for the people in the community. So one of the things we've got is community support. Pella does a lot of different things in the community. Uh, we give people the opportunity to go help with that. So recently we did Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we donated those nine windows for that, eight or nine windows for that house. And then I sent some of my team out to install them, which was a little bit scary because I sent, so I got eight people signed up or nine people. None of them have installed the window. They all know how to make the windows, but they don't know how to put it in. So I grabbed a couple of people from my maintenance department and said, go help these guys, because if we install it upside down, it's going to look really bad. So we made sure that we did that right. Very family-focused community. Um, they have scholarship programs, so they're focused as well with sharing some of that and matching gifts. So what's important to you is important to the company. So if you're donating, donating some of your own money to a specific cause, they're going to match some of that as well. Next slide. All right, so these are some of the jobs. Um, that we have at Pella, and I'm just going to show a little bit of video. I'll speak to it as best I can. Hopefully you can see it from where you're sitting. 
So the first one we're going to look at is called casement sash off bear. <coughs> and they won't be standing there doing this job all day long. They rotate through, but you can see two people. So these parts are coming out of them at a pretty good clip. They've got to inspect it for defects. They've got to use equipment to test it. And then they've got to make sure they're putting it in the right slot. So when I look at this video, when you look at this video, you're going to see different things. But what I see is PPE. they got their eye shields on. they got their hearing protection. You can see the nitrile rubber gloves they've got. I see different things. Yeah, you just threw a punch at her if you noticed that. They've got different things for comfort, right? I can see the rubber mat. I see the fan up above, keep them comfortable for the temperature. Uh, you can't really hear the music, so I would shut the sound off, but we have music playing throughout the plant. Um, some days people are happy about that, other days, such as Wednesday Country Day, some people aren't so happy about that. So it kind of depends on what you get in that mood. So this is the different things that they're going through in this type of job, um, supplying these parts for the next customer. Just about there. And you can see he's doing a little bit on the touch panel right there. Um, so when you think about that, all this equipment is all tied to each other. So we're producing 2,500 to 3,000 windows and doors a day. So when you think about that, each window has about 30 parts. So we're going to produce 15,000 parts a day that have to be perfect quality. They're not always perfect quality. What he was doing right there is reordering back through the computer system up to the front saying, this part you just sent me was not good. Make me another one before you get done with it. So in constant communication, the technology there um, is very high from that standpoint. This next one is sash to frame. That's all right. I didn't. So this is a sash to frame. Um, so this is on the assembly line. So now the parts have already got put together, right? So now we're still assembling the window. Uh, once again, you can kind of see the PPE. He's got his earplugs, side shield and that. He's got his fan up in the corner I can see for comfort. If you can't see the mat he's standing on. He's got like a lazy suit in the style, right? So we can have the ergonomics. So each one of these jobs, we go do an ergonomic analysis to make sure that it's at the right height, the right comfort, the right position for these people. Everything's got to be between, I'm going to pull it out now, I think it's 36 to 42 inches is their workstation height. Um, see him working with the pneumatic equipment, some of that. So within that equipment, right, you got to have the maintenance guys that are going to take care of that. Um, you got to have the right screws, so you got supply management, making sure this stuff's coming in, because when you're going through 15,000 parts every day, uh, you got to make sure that this stuff is showing up when we need it and on time. Another one here is a test rack. So this is Ryan. He's working on one of the double homes. So it's assembled now. His job is to make sure it's assembled right. So Ryan's looking through that. He's going to get it in the right position. Look out the colors, make sure there's no scratches. Make things are going sliding up and down like they're supposed to after assembly. Um, and then when you look over here, Ryan's going to start doing the hardware. So this is where the technology again is key. Did he select the right hardware? You can't really see it, but there's sensors right there. If Ryan put his hand in the wrong one, buzzers go off to let Ryan know wrong color. Because we've got to make the right color. If Ryan grabbed the wrong screw gun over there, it wouldn't feed out the screw because it's the wrong color. It knows which unit is being produced, where it is on the line, and at what time, uh, based on the things that Ryan was doing. From there, Ryan was going to send that unit into our air tester. Every unit gets air tested to make sure it doesn't leak. If it does, buzzers go off, somebody else comes and takes care of that. Here you got Vicki. So she's back in our extrusion cell. So these saws will automatically do an optimization. It's kind of tough to see over here. When she comes over here, you're going to create different buckets. They took that information and said, how do you optimize this to make sure that we don't waste parts? You can see the green light there. There's blue lights on these carts. It's telling Vicki where she needs to put that part. She can't just stick it in any slot because then the window won't work right. Once she puts it in the right slot, she hits that green button, you'll see it jump way off to the other side now. Now she has to put this part in here. And the reason it's doing this is because it took all these windows and said, if you cut them up in this extrusion at length, you'll waste the least amount of material possible. So engineering and maintenance have gone back through to optimize all that stuff on every order, 15,000 units a day. So the saws have to be kept up, right? So maintenance is working on those while we're not working, making sure we're doing the PMs, preventive maintenance, TPMs, thinking through all the different jobs. I'm throwing a lot of you through this one. So when you're making 15,000 units, they all got to get moved through the plant. So here's somebody that's on a forklift. So Jeremy Sweeney here, he's taking the stuff off the line. And you can see the skid. They built these units 
uh, composite them up, put them together, and now he's got to move them into the warehouse. So you can see we got thousands of units right there, right? Or at least it looks like it. Um, we'll be shipping those, we'll ship out 3,000 units a day. So those are the ones that he's got to locate. You can see some of the safety features. It's kind of hard to see. He's got a safety belt on. He has to have a license to run that. You see the blue lights before and after shine out about 10 feet. So a pedestrian sees a blue light coming, we know that there's a forklift or a PIV uh, coming through the system. So we need to keep our eyes, ears open, and make sure we make contact. These are some of the different jobs that we have at Pelham. And we'll get through this when I got another slide. So this next slide, that's not all of them though, right? So those are some of the ones that you're gonna see on the shop floor. Uh, with that, I was talking about the careers for advancement. So some of our shop floor, we'll get into our coordinators, then they become department managers. We've got engineering there. Uh, we've got people in our safety department, a lot of different quality departments to help make sure the equipment, the parts are being done properly, training the people to do it. We've got health services, so we've got a nurse there. We've got human resources, such as Jen and Jeff. Uh, we've got administrative assistants. We've got people scheduling this stuff. So when you start thinking about all the jobs, at Pella or manufacturing, very diverse. All right, we'll keep moving. So the question being, what does it take to get a job, get hired? And this isn't just pertaining to Pella. When I go through this list, this is what people are mainly looking for, right? So I want you to think about it. desire to work hard and improve oneself, ability to communicate. That goes with a little bit of small talk, right? So you can say, yeah, how's the weather? Yeah, it's kind of windy today, right? A little small talk. Look at who's talking to you and you listen. Ability to identify problems and brainstorm solutions, right? So that comes back to employee suggestions. We get 3,000 of those a year. They've got ideas on how they feel they can make things better. Time management. Show up on time every day and be punctual. Can't show up after the shift started. Doesn't work very well. You gotta show up every day, otherwise your teammates, you're letting them down. Work in a team environment and integrity, which for me is honesty, trustworthy, you're kind, you know the difference between right and wrong, and you do it. So these are some of the things that at Telecorp, this is what we'd be looking for to get hired. So from that, my thought was, if I'm sitting in your shoes, everybody a freshman? Anybody not a freshman? All right, so we got a little bit that aren't. Okay, so I'm still thinking, in your shoes, what would that mean? You gotta practice these skills for them to become important, right? So when you sit there and say, okay, show up to class on time and be prepared. There's a little bit of that time management, right? Your teacher expects you, before the bell rang, you're in your sheet. I think I've seen it here, but they've got cell phone slots, right? So have your cell phone where it's supposed to be, get in your sheet, have your books out, be ready to listen when that bell goes off. That's a little bit of the time management. Same thing, you got all these different activities, sports, um, debate, speech, drama, music. You run into all these different activities, you got a job. You got to manage your homework and your time in that. That's some of the practice that you get to do. Put in the extra practice your coach or instructor desires. So if you go out for band, you probably have to practice your instrument. You go out for sports, you just go to practice, that's it. My guess is your coach is saying, hey, did you show up a little early? Put in a couple shots, maybe show up in the morning, do the weight training. Those are some of those little extras. Here's one for communication. Actually look at your friends, parents, and teachers in the eye when talking or listening to them. It's an important skill that you're gonna need throughout life, not just at Pella, but any job that you're looking for. Admit to mistakes. This is that integrity piece. I don't expect everybody to be perfect all the time when they're working at Pella. We're gonna make hundreds of mistakes a day. That's how it works. It's okay to make a mistake, it's okay to learn from that mistake, but don't try to hide it, admit to it. Help us figure out how not to make that again. Go from there. I threw this one in just for fun, right? Volunteer. When you start thinking about volunteerism, um, you can get a lot of these traits from that. You're gonna have to manage your time, because you volunteer, show up to help out. Um, you're gonna work in a team. You're probably gonna have to solve some problems. You're gonna be experienced with people that you're not used to working with. So if you have that time, volunteer. Put those practices into skill. Practice those skills, sorry. Next slide. All right, so then start thinking about, now you wanna get that job, you gotta do an interview. So when you start thinking about an interview, I just wrote down what I think an interview is. When I've gone into interviews, I've interviewed many different times, you get time to sell yourself, 
for us in our interviews, it's about 20 minutes, maybe a little longer depending on how it goes. You have to sell yourself because you're competing. If we had one job and all of you applied and we interview you all, only one of you is going to get the job. You got to compete with everybody in this room. So you got to sell yourself. Be on time and presentable. Don't wear your pajama bottoms. Don't wear the flip flops. Think about where you're going to go present, right? How you're going to present yourself. I know ripped jeans are the end thing right now, but it might not be for that person that you're interviewing with. You got to think about that before you prepare for that. You might want to have that collar, actually comb the hair. Think about those different things. Be attentive. So we always take our people on a tour. We want to see if they're listening. We'll ask certain things to see how it's going. If I'm walking, give them a tour, and I got to stop because they're five steps behind me, and I do walk fast, so I got to slow down sometimes. It tells me, ah, I'm not sure they're really all into this. It gives a perception to me what I'm looking for. Do your own research on the company. When you're coming into that interview, know a little bit about what you just are looking for. Make sure that culture is what you're looking for. Know a little bit about that and have some questions prepared. And when I say questions, it's not, how much am I gonna make? It's probably not the question you wanna start with. You wanna ask something more about that company and them. And I like this one too, come alone. You guys are applying for the job. Maybe you had to get a ride there, but leave mom out in the car. She doesn't need to come in and help you. Next slide. So here's some of the questions we would ask. So if you're gonna to come to Pella, we're gonna ask you a bunch of different questions. Tell me about yourself. Be prepared for that. Uh, I'm in sports, freshman in school, maybe you're playing at Fairview or Fairway. They're gonna ask you some of these. Why are you interested in a job in Pella? If the answer is I just need a job, that's honest, I appreciate that. Well, then I'm probably looking for a little bit more than that. Why did you search us out? This is what I always like. Do you have a reliable way of getting to work? You'd be surprised how many people can't actually get to work. It makes it tough for me to think and say, oh, that's probably the person I want to hire. How do you handle yourselves in time of conflict? How many absences? How many times can I be gone a year? I'm always curious to see what they'd answer in that question. If you ask your teacher, how many times can a student be gone? Ask a student how many times. Probably get different answers. What would your previous manager say about you? Once in a while, we'll call those previous managers if you put them down as a reference just to see. But what would they say about you? Show up to work, they're hard workers. Oh, they got some attendance issues, they're not always here. What are your strengths? What are your opportunities? What are you always working on to improve? So these are some of the questions that you should expect when you're gonna go into an interview. Next slide. All right, so I've got a little bit of time for Q&A, and then I've got one more challenge for you outside this. But this is the stuff Showed you a little bit about what Pella is, what we're looking for. Here's some of the interview questions and the process that we go through. What questions do you have about that? Now, one of the things that he projected up there was volunteerism. How many of you are taking psych right now with Mr. McCartan? Okay. Why does Mr. McCartan require you to do volunteerism? You get to get back to the community because you get to get the college class for free. Grace, I know you have volunteered already. Um, in fact, I believe you were at the daycare center yesterday, and so Grace has done daycare center. You're doing where else? Uh, nursing home and concession stands. Okay. And what has that done for you? It's helped me expand my resources out in the community for sure, and I've met more people. <laughs> I mean, does it make sense now why Mr. McCartan may be trying to introduce you to that? Because a lot of businesses expect that and encourage it. Definitely encourage you. you get to work with other people, right? You said that. Mm -hmm. um, you're taking some of your own time to go help others. It says who you are, what we're looking for, how that works into our culture. That's one of those things that we're always kind of looking for. So it is a big deal. Glad you picked up on that. It's, mm -hmm. it's something we ask. Mm -hmm. How about some do's and don'ts on resumes? I'm going to give that one to Jen. She gets to look at <laughs> 10 times more resumes than I do. Um, I would say simplicity, simplicity <laughs> over um, too much information. So, um, you know, clean bullet points. Um, you don't have to put a lot of information in there, but just put key points. 
So if you have a specific job that you've done, say you work at Fairway, so what are some of those key points of what you do? Um, it's not necessarily like take groceries out for people. Like how can you phrase that in a way that's going to be beneficial to the, the business that you are presenting to, that you're applying to? So be like, I it was I was my major point at Fairway was customer service. I helped clients get the food out, you know, and just kind of expand on some of those skills. Daily interaction with those with those individuals. You know, communication, I really picked up on my communication. Like just different things that you can really highlight um, in your interview versus every single thing that you did for that company or every single thing that you did for that team or every single thing you did for your coach. So try to be as, as simplistic as you can because there's a lot of resumes that fly through our desks. And yes, we want to make sure that it stands out, but I'm not going to flip through a three-page resume either when it's just word for word, a, a ton of information on there because I'll just lose interest and I'll go to the next one. So I would try to keep it as simple as you can. It's the best way to describe it, simplicity, right? So if all of you are applying for that one job, think of how many resumes that is. And if you just turned in the seven-page resume, probably lost interest because I've already gone through 40 other pages and it gets pretty pretty grueling to go through all that. So simplistic um, is a great way to look at it. One page is what I would say. What's your number one hireable trait and your number one fireable trait? <laughs> ah, you know, well, it's the same thing. I would say attendance. Yeah. Attendability. That's the biggest thing. Um, if you can come to work every day on time and show up every day, that's key. And that's going to be for any employer out there. Um, that's the thing that we struggle with the most, and that's what gets people fired is lack of coming to work. I mean, you're pretty much firing yourselves by not coming to work. And so it's nothing that we're doing, and that's the hard thing for us. It's not something that we can just teach you to be able to do. I can't come to your house and force you to get out of bed and come to work. That's something that you have to do. And so as employers, we struggle with this as well from at Pella, but any employer in town is gonna to tell you the exact same thing. People just need to come to work every day on time and just be dependable. Everything else we can teach you, but we cannot teach you to come to work every day. We can't have you have, get that motivation. We can't motivate you enough to be able to do that. We try. We try an incentive. You know, if you're here for 30 days, 60 days without missing a day, you're going to get a quarter raise. Guess what? That didn't even work. You know, so then we ditched that. You know, so come to work every day, which means come to school every day. Be attentive in your classroom. Be to your job on time. Be um, at your lesson or your sport, sporting event on time. That's the biggest thing. You guys can start that now and, and get that into your career. That's the key right now. So if that's the biggest thing and they're going to ask one of us to be a reference for them and you don't come to school every day and the one thing that they're going to ask us is if you think that you're going to show up, you should probably practice that in school again. So one of the interview questions that we ask, and, and so we'll just throw this out to everybody, how many times do you think it's okay to miss it in a year's time? And I'm not, I'm not saying like, hey, I got planned vacation, but just calling in for no reason at all. I just don't want to go to work today. How many of you think are those, how many are those acceptable in a year's time? Kind of sick in there. Yeah, sick. What do you think? Two or three days. Two or three, Two or three days. days. Anybody else got a different guess? What do you think is all right? 30. 30? Did you say 30? Yeah. 30. Okay. All right. Odds <laughs> are long before 30, you won't even get to 30. No. Because you won't be there anymore. <laughs> Two or three? Two to three is It happens, right? Life happens. We understand that. You have kids, they get sick, you get sick. Those things happen. We, we've got policies around all this, we understand. It's the 30s that we see. So, perfect. We're right on time then. So here's the challenge. So thinking about those skills, right? I'm going to challenge you to put it down. Put the cell phone down. Next time you're with your group of friends, I want you to try this. Either put your phone down, next time you guys are just sitting around a table like this, having fun, talking. Don't even pick up your phone. I want to notice how often they're looking at their phones and you're not. See how many in five minutes count how many times they picked up their phone and looked at it, but not you. Stop paying attention to you. So 
so that they can pay attention to their phone. See that? Happens at work all the time. Don't get me wrong. Even when I'm in meetings, I'll notice my team doing the same thing. Something that important that we need to stop doing what we're doing. So try that. There's a challenge for you. Thank you very much.